It is always a challenge when you are in a new preaching setting. And one of the things that I'm very sensitive about is time. So I was very pleased at the end of the um, service uh, this morning that someone commented on my military precision and punctuality with regard to time. Um, I remember a friend of mine, great, great uh, preacher, but he was known for his very lengthy sermons. He always blamed it on the Holy Spirit, but he was known <laughs> for his, his very lengthy sermons. And he was an amazing communicator. He was from the Caribbean. And uh, there was a, a big clock in the back, but um, he pastored an Adventist church probably longer than most. It was like his 20th anniversary and in California, of course, you can get away with that. And uh, they, they put his picture, took down the, the clock and put his picture uh, in the back um, as, a, as a tribute to the fact that he had been in the church for 20 years. So he was up preaching one of his long sermons and one lady uh, got in late and uh, he continued going on interminably and she finally turned around to see what time it was and saw his picture <laughs> and said to the clock and she said, oh my God, they've taken down time and put up eternity. So you, 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 have, to be, you have to be very, very careful about time. I, I, I don't mind people looking at their watches. When I'm preaching, I do, I do get a little nervous when they start tapping their watches to make sure that uh, they are still running. Of course, when God blessed me to become the 62nd chaplain of the United States Senate, I had a little more confidence. I went to a friend and uh, said to him, he was very precise, military precision. Uh, I said, Robert, how long do I have to preach, and he said, Barry, he says, I, I'm, I'm surprised that you would ask me this question. You, you're the 62nd chaplain of the United States Senate. You, you preach for as long as you want to, uh, but the people leave at 12. <laughs> so, um, so I am going to be, uh, try to be as sensitive to time as I can today. I want to talk about turning the tables on evil. Turning the tables on evil, because we're living in a very evil time. Uh, the tragedy uh, that just happened here in Florida when, when children can't even go to school without uh, fear of losing their lives. We are living in evil times. Um, when an individual can come into a church, Mother Emanuel, sit through a 45-minute Bible study and then get up and begin killing people point-blank range. This, my friends, is not clinical psychopathology. This is demon possession. Okay. Make no mistake about it. We, we rarely hear people talking about the demonic. But we are engaged in spiritual warfare. Okay? Ephesians 6, you know it by rote, we wrestle not against, but against rulers of the darkness of this world. Biblically literate church. Thank you, Pastor. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay. And if we are so naive that like Joseph, we feel we're living in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Remember Joseph, I just, every time I read, it's, it's the longest biography in scripture other than our blessed Lord, of course, Genesis 37 through 50. This kid was clueless, okay? He really was. <laughs> I had some kids in my Sabbath school class, like he was clueless, okay? Now, here he was, handsome, Looked like his mother, Rachel. Rachel so beautiful. Jacob started crying when he met her. That's a pretty woman. When you start crying, <laughs> I'm serious. When you, you know, I'm so happy to be. That is when I get to heaven. After I see Jesus, you got to see Jesus first, okay? I'll see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego later on. I want to see Rachel, okay? 
I want to see someone who, what, Genesis 29, you know, and Jacob worked seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I want to see Rachel when I get to heaven. Yeah? But Joseph was clueless about the evil and the pathology in his environment, okay? Bible says he would talk to his father about the deviancy of his brother. Guess what Reuben said today? You know, okay, not exactly a graduate of the Dale Carnegie course. You know, you're not daddy. You know, so he was a tattletale. And then his father got him that, you know, Armani suit that he was wearing around, you know, the coat of many colors. So you're good looking already. And remember his brothers, they were the progeny of Leah. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Okay. Let it back. Keep my mind clear, Lord. Okay? Okay? But she was tender-eyed. I'm not going there. You've heard enough. You know what this is all. All right? And so here he is walking around like a combination Denzel Washington Morris Chestnut. Okay? You know? They were hating on him. And he didn't even know it. You know, clueless about the evil and the danger in the, I had a dream the other day, fellas, maybe you can help me interpret it. I, you know, I just, I'm just not good at interpreting dreams. We were in a field, let me explain it to you. And you know, with sheaves of wheat, my sheaf stood tall and the other sheaves bowed down to my sheaf. Now, what could that mean? <laughs> I mean, my son, Joseph, get a reality check. Take a chill pill. No, that's a, I'm fluent in another language without an accent as well, Lewis. But anyhow, there you are. Yeah. Ebonics. But anyhow, okay. okay. And then Jacob was clueless. You know, proud of his boy, good looking boy. He's going somewhere. And then he comes. The sun, moon, and 11 stars. I, I'm still having these dreams. Could you help me interpret this dream? My God, evil in the world. And so daddy is foolish enough to send him on an errand. You're going to send that boy, <laughs> Lord have mercy. You're going to send that boy out to his crazy homicidal brothers to check on him, you know? <laughs> And Joe, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for the neighbor. Would you be my, would you be my neighbor? Have you seen my brothers? Oh, they're there? Oh, well, I, it's a beautiful day in the, uh, have you lost your mind? Listen to me. Love sees from afar. Father of the prodigal son, and when he was afar off, but so does hate. Hate sees from afar. And they saw Joseph, handsome, coat of many colors, brushing the dew from the lips of the daffodils as he, as he promenaded through the meadow. And they said, these are siblings to one another, behold, the dreamer comes. Come now, let us kill him. I mean, how are you going to talk to one another about blood, point blank range? Come down, let us kill him. And cast him into a pit. And already looking at the logistical implication, and we will say a wild beast hath destroyed him. And we will see what will become of his dreams. 2 Timothy 3.12, all those who live godly will suffer persecution. Well, I'm, I'm doing fine, Chaplain. Praise the Lord. It just, it just, it's a magic carpet ride. Check up on your life. Because if you're living right, there will be pushback. And God has chosen you and me to be salt and light to our generation. He's chosen you and me to turn the tables on evil as Joseph did. To turn the tables on evil. The age of eight, I walked into the kitchen. My father 
was pointing a loaded gun at my mother. That's the environment I grew up in. It was an environment of domestic violence, of alcoholism, and of an absentee father. And every time I saw my mother mistreated, the Holy Spirit impressed my heart to turn the tables on evil. And I said, one day I'm going to have a wife. And I'm going to treat her like my mama deserves to be treated. Amen. My dear wife, almost 45 years, I was only two when I got married. <laughs> Child, well, you know, we do that where I come from. In the hood, <laughs> okay. You still old, even if I were two, I'd still be old. Praise the Lord, isn't it? 45 years of marriage. And Brenda said to me, she says, why are you so good to me? Good thing for a man to hear. Only thing that tops it is, you had me at hello, but we're not going there. <laughs> we're not going there. Right. And she didn't know that the reason is because God had turned the tables on evil. And instead of me being angry or wanting to imitate the pathology of my father, I said, I've got to do better than that. I want my wife to experience what my mama should have been experienced. It's what Joseph was saying in Genesis 50 verse 20 when he said to his brothers, you meant it for evil. Praise God. But God meant it for good. I challenge you with all of the polarization in our society, people don't even want to call the president by name. Okay? I'm serious. I was in St. Louis, mentioned in the early service, and everybody was saying, 45 this and 45 that. I preached at three churches. You know, so there was some Baptists saying the same thing. And I 45. So I said, excuse me, I said, everybody's talking about 45. What 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 are you talking about? And we're talking about the president. The one who must not be named. <laughs> said, really? Eh? God wants to use us as salt and light. We need to turn the tables on evil because God commands us to do so. Romans 12, 21. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil. It's a command of God that we use goodness. We are the salt of the earth. We make the environment more palatable. Imagine grits without salt. I shiver when I think of the thought of grits. <laughs> it, it, just, it just makes a tremble go all through me. Grits without salt. Lord, help us. <laughs> this is what the world would be like. It just reminded me I was at an IHOP in, in uh, Fresno, California, and I asked the waitress for some grits, and she said, what, what, are, what are grits? No, 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 no. But, you know, they don't know anything about that. <laughs> we must be salt, make the environment more palatable. People should not be high-fiving one another because you had a sick day at work. Oh, he's not in today. He's not in today. Make the environment more flavorful. We ought to be light. We ought to illuminate. We ought to reframe. Okay, I love it. Oh, Naaman, first a little prisoner of war, child. I know somebody back where I come from who can heal you of this leprosy. This is incurable disease. Huh? Really? Yeah. So Naaman goes, five-star general, head of, okay. I know that they will show me some difference, as you were, as you were, okay? Elijah is back in his study, reading some Ellen White books. That's what it says in the Hebrew. <laughs> and so Elisha is back there and, and said, send a servant out. You know, you're you going to send a servant out for a five-star general? So that was the thing that really, I look, two-star. I know what if I, he, that, you didn't explain to him who's here. And so he's already upset. Well, it better be something special. He's going to send me somewhere to Florida for some surgery to get rid of this stuff, okay? Adventist health system, health care. 
and said, go dip seven times in the dirtiest water we got around. <laughs> I mean, he's apoplectic. And it's an enlisted man who turns the table on that evil and says, now boss, you know, you're the one who graduated at the top of your class at the military academy. I'm, you know, look, but let me, ju I mean, just it, just, it just seems to me if he had asked you to swim a crocodile infested lake to you, know, alligators, uh, to climb the highest mountain, you know, uh, and a light sleep. We need to illuminate. We need to illuminate. I told in the, in the early service, that I was preaching Group of Seventh-day Adventists, about 600 folk, and they wanted to have a Q&A, and the moderator said, how many believe that God placed Donald Trump in the White House? And out of 600 people, two hands went up. <laughs> and they're going, now the chaplain of the, the 62nd chaplain of the United States, they're going to ask the 62nd chaplain of the United States Senate some questions. So I knew what I was doing, so I just, Flip the script. I said, well, let me ask them a question before I field their question. How many of you believe that God placed Nebuchadnezzar in his position of power? I knew, I knew good Adventists. We know Daniel. We know ourselves some Daniel, okay? I figured they had to know the first verse of Daniel chapter 1. And God delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, okay? Whose middle name was Nebuchadnezzar crazy, because he was crazy, okay? <laughs> you know, yeah. And hands reluctantly, but almost every hand went up. I said, thank you. Now I'll open myself to your questions. This is my father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. God is not on his throne, wringing his hands, saying to the Son and the Holy Spirit, what we going to do? Are you serious? By the words of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Members of the judicial branch, the legislative branch, and the executive branch borrow their heart from my Savior every day for in him we live and move and breathe and have our being. And he's commanded us to overcome evil with good. And you don't overcome evil whatever it is, racism, polarization, discrimination, you don't over disunity, you don't overcome evil with the speech, I have a nightmare. You don't, you don't <laughs> overcome evil with, uh, I have a nightmare. That, no, 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 you, 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 be light, refrain, as our blessed Lord did. So he commands it, but not only does he command it, he equips us. He says, I've got some weapons for you. You're wrestling not against flesh and blood, but I, I put on the whole armor right there in Ephesians 6. Whole armor of God, helmet of salvation, sword of, uh, 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 the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, shoes shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, We've shield of faith, quench the fiery dark. We have armor to use in our spiritual warfare. So he equips us. But I like the third reason. The first reason he commands it, the first, second reason is he equips us. Third reason is he is with us. My Savior is with me no matter what I am going through. He says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, be content with what you have, for he says, I will never or hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And then I love, we talk about the Great Commission, but my favorite part of the Great Commission is, lo, I am with you always. I used to use that as an excuse for not flying on airplanes, but now it, he means, lo, I am with you always. Some of you will get that on the way home. <laughs> 
start chuckling in the car. What are you talking about? I just, I, you, you even high, low. I just, I, I just figured that out. Okay, you know. <laughs> even until the end of the age. And I love, I call them the boys. Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. Oh, they, they're wonderful <laughs> fellas. Yeah, that's right. Oh you, oh, you didn't know that, that, the, that uh, African Americans in the Old Testament there? Yeah, okay. And so here, here, they go into crazy Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, he's crazy. You know, make all of their homes dung hills, heat the furnace seven times hotter. It's fire, your majesty. Well, somehow, you heard what I said. You know, he's crazy. And these boys go in, and in the language of my boyhood, they're selling wolf tickets, okay? Daniel chapter 3. The first words to the king is, we are not careful how we answer you. Now, that's, that's not a good way to start, okay? We are not careful how we answer you. Okay? Really? Okay. I have the power of life and death, and you're not even careful? How you... Our God. Our God is able to deliver us, really, from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us. That, that's the kind of faith that will enable you to turn the tables on. But if he doesn't, my God, my God, my God, we burn before we bow to anyone but God. And I love it, you know. So hot, destroys the people who threw him in, but Nebuchadnezzar said, didn't I throw in three? These folk, to use the language of my boyhood, multilingual, are chilling in the flames. Praise the Lord. No, no pun intended, okay? They're chilling in the flames. And the fourth one, pre-existent, the fourth one, God, my God, he comes with me in the fire. Whatever I'm going through, he is there. Human beings may leave me. Human beings may betray me. Human beings may lie on me. Human beings may backstab. But I know somebody who empowers me to turn the tables on evil. And he said, Barry, I've got your back. <laughs> People on the, they're about, the chaplain, how do you take it in Capitol Hill? You know, all of the journals. Yeah. Oh, it's so crazy. Really? I get paid every month. Really? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, really? I know somebody. I talk to him in the morning, throughout the day. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I am his own. Ah, and the joy. Lewis, you shouldn't have brought me here because I, I feel something pushing me, boy. See, 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 you're going to lose your job before I'm over here. The, 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 the joy we share. Oh, I, I feel God in this place. As we tarry there. None other has ever known. Andre Crouch saying, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Nobody, nobody. I've had joys in life that no human being should have, but no one ever cared for me like Jesus, and no one has ever given me peace in the midst of a storm. Holy Spirit living inside of me. <laughs> Many times telling me what to pray and I'm arguing with him. <laughs> Barry, never calls me doctor or admiral, Lewis. I don't know why. He, ne <laughs> he, ne he never says Admiral Black, uh, Dr. Billy. Barry, yes, yeah, yeah. this is what I want you to say. To the I, well, I've already got my prayer, Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm good. We're we good for, for the next three days. No, no, no. No, we're not good. I want you to tell the senators these words. I'm driving, you know. Have mercy upon us, O God, and save us from the man. 
you don't talk to senators that way, Lord. <laughs> I want you to tell them, deliver us from the hypocrisy of attempting to sound reasonable while being unreasonable. He downloads when you're connected. And it's easy, Luke eleven thirteen. We don't talk about it. If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, Luke eleven thirteen. how much more is your heavenly father eager to give his Holy Spirit to those who ask? There is an anointing that comes by request only. And when I started praying, Luke eleven thirteen, 13, Lewis, I was a full manuscript preacher. But where the spirit of God is, there is freedom and there is liberty. I dare you to pray. Luke eleven thirteen 13 is a, I didn't even, I said, Lord, I don't know what you're talking about here, but you said that, so hit me, abracadabra, whatever you do. The Holy Spirit living inside of you so that you are living the resurrected life. Oh, what a savior. Oh, what a savior. And so in Luke chapter 22, we look at turning the tables on evil. Now the festival of the unleavened bread called the Passover was approaching. Now check this out. Check this out. Look at the people who are trying to get rid of Jesus and the chief priests. Oh my goodness. We talking union and division level here. The chief priests, maybe GC, Lord help us. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law. I mean, these are, that, that sounds like Andrews University to me. I, the teachers of the law were looking, my God, you're talking about the evil in our world, for some way to get rid of the purest person who ever walked on the planet. We're trying to get rid of him. For they were afraid of the people. Now, we, you got, got to watch the people. Now, check this out. Then Satan Beloved, the demonic is real. <laughs> then Satan entered a drunk on Skid Row. Yeah. Then Satan entered a prostitute. Then Satan entered a pimp. Then Satan entered a gambler. No, Satan enters the treasurer of the church. Of, of the emperor, you know, the one who, when Mary spent a year's wages for the alabaster bars and ointment, why the waste? Why the waste? This, this money, Lord help us, could have been used <laughs> to feed the poor. The Bible said he had his hand in the till. Now, two things I want to say about the passage, right? Just hold it right there. If you're going to turn the tables on evil, hear me, hear me, hear me. Remember that God is looking for people he can use. Oh, yeah, he is. He's looking for people he can use. He said through Samuel to King Saul, 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14, God has sought for and found a man after his own heart. Lord, have Imagine the sovereign God of the universe, uh, Cheryl, searching for someone he can use someone who's a man or a woman after his own heart. And David is a teenager, too young to be conscripted in the army. When Samuel eventually goes to the home of Jesse, he does not even have a connection with his sibling. Nobody says, where's David? Yeah. Eliab, tall, handsome, you know, promenades before. The, and, and Samuel is so mesmerized, he's reaching for the oil, can't take his eyes off. And God says, never mind how he looks. Good word for single people. Never mind how he looks. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, because I, I, I used to have some pressure. You know, wives, on, you know, been married for 45 years. And, and the wives, you know, and there was this guy back in school, and he was, you know, Mr. Handsome. You know. And his name would come up from time to time, and a yes, honey. Uh, so it was our 25th reunion. Praise God for reunions, okay? <laughs> I got on campus, and I, hey, Barry, I recognize the voice, but I tell you, this is this bald head, white hair, horseshoe type baldness. 
about 250 pounds heavier than he was. I said, you stay right here. I want you to stay right here. I said, I got to run back to the hotel very quickly, but I got something very important. And I ran back to the hotel, rushed in, and said, honey, we got to go to the campus right now. <laughs> But I'm like, no, 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 it's, this is an emergency. We got to get there right now. And I got somebody waiting. We got to go right now, okay? <laughs> Haven't heard his name in 20 years at that. No, 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 no. Thank God for time. It'll put a whipping on time. No, we're within here, okay? God is looking for people he can use. Praise God. My mother was pregnant with me when she was baptized. Asked for the Holy Spirit to anoint her unborn child as she became a member of God's Sabbath keeping church. I knew my earliest memories, Pastor, I knew I was called to preach. But every preacher I knew was financially challenged. I'm being polite, okay? We used to call them Poe, not poor. They were po. They couldn't afford the extra O and R. They were po. Right? Right? And I ran. In, 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 God wanted to use me. In, in, at Oakwood, I changed my major every other quarter. We were on the quarter system, okay? Some people say, why do you have three master's degrees and two doctorates? The reason is, I, I majored temporarily in so many different things. I was just trying to tie off the loose ends, okay? Right? I was pre-med, pre-law, behavioral science, you name it. I was it. And it was an English teacher, you know, who turned me around. You would think theology class introduced me to the poetry of, of uh, Francis Thompson, the British poet. And God spoke to me as I was reading The Hound of Heaven. You know that? I fled him down the nights and down the days. I fled him. I knew I was running from God. Anywhere but go to Nineveh. Down the arches of the years. He wanted to use me. I fled him down the labyrinthine ways of my own mind. And in the midst of tears, I hid from him. And under running laughter of this state hopes I sped and shot precipitated and down titanic glooms of chasmic fear from those strong feet that followed, followed after me. Our blessed Lord said in John 15, 16 to his disciples, you have not chosen me. Ah. Have chosen you. You are here not because you had the good sense to choose my Savior. He saw you before the plan of salvation was laid. He saw you. He is the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And by the time I got to Thompson's peroration, I'd given in. Thompson cries out naked. I wait thy Lamb's uplifted stroke. My harness, piece by piece, thou hast hewn it from me and smitten me to my knees. I am defenseless, utterly. I was one of the most reluctant individuals called to the ministry, the history of calls. I spat out to the Lord, okay, I'll be a poor preacher. Something in my spirit said, who said anything about poor? Because when you permit God to use you as he desires, 84th Psalm verse 11, no good thing will he withhold from the upright. You're not going to miss out on your good thing when you let him order your steps. So remember that God wants to use you, but the devil enters Judas, so turning the tables on evil, remember that the devil is looking for instruments he can use as well. And that's why we're seeing the chaos in our society and world. Mark chapter 5, we are legion. We are many trying to intimidate Jesus. Now you know, you're going to intimidate 
my Lord, in the hood. <laughs> when someone would approach us, we would, you know, give me a, give me a quarter. You know, we knew that was not a suggestion. <laughs> you know, you would try to buy time by pretending you knew martial arts. <laughs> I said, give me a quarter. Oh, here it is. Okay, so here it is. So this is the, the demons. We are legion. We are many. He said, I don't care who you are. I said, come out. Now, when you had a serious spanking, you don't forget it. <laughs> Luke chapter 10, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. He knows what kind of a beating my Savior and Lord can put on him. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Demons tremble at the sound of the name of our blessed Lord. Well, can we go into the pigs? My God, the degradation of sin, the horror and the pathology of evil, angels that once inhabited eternal, eternity who sang celestial anthems around a rainbow-encircled throne in a land where night never come, now make the request to make their domicile in unclean animals. And Jesus said, well, Leviticus 11, Deuteronomy 14, hey, pig, gone into the pigs. And this demon-possessed instrument of Satan had enough evil in him, a legion is 6,000, he said legions, so there were at least 12,000, had enough evil in him that when what was inside of him went into the 2,000 pigs, Mark chapter 5, the pigs ran off the cliff. We've got people walking around being used as instruments of the devil, but there's a third thing. And did we finish off? Did we get the verse... Five and six, well, make sure we get it. They would, let's go back to, and Judas went, this is, this is a member of the church now. <laughs> Lord, help us. And Judas, a member of the Forest Lake Church, <laughs> went to the conference brethren, the union brethren, the GC brethren, and the officers of the temple God. Brothers and sisters, look, do you even realize how obscene this is and discussed with them how he might betray our blessed Lord. Verse 5. The church leaders were delighted. We, we can get the money. We, 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 we got the money. Delighted. He consented and watch, help us, Jesus, watch for an opportunity. Here's a man in church watching for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to these leaders when no crowd was, was present. And to me, <laughs> the most insensitive thing, he betrayed him with a kiss. You're gonna seal your transgression with a kiss? Oh, my God. So, remember, God wants to use you and me. Your gifts, my goodness, at the singing that you've had here today. <laughs> yeah. The devil would want to use that, but thank God you're using it for his, his, his purposes. The devil wants to use you, but only you can open the door to Christ or Satan. Revelation 3.20, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's knocking, beloved. And we must make the decision whether or not we will be used by him or used by Satan. I was afraid of poverty. I pay more money every year in taxes than my parents made together their entire lifetime. 
you're not going to miss out on God's plan A for your life when you permit him to use you to turn the tables on evil. And how do you do it? There's a song that simply says, if I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I can show somebody he or she is traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. How do I prepare to do that? James 4, 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil, and he will do what? The devil is a bully. Minimal resistance, and he runs. I remember, I was psyched up. When I, when I embraced this text, I, I prayed and I said to the Lord, I may not be victorious, but the days of going down without a fight are over. Yeah, I, I just got tired. You ever got tired of coming to God with the same sin, you know? And on a very short interval between. I could see if it was a biannual thing, but yeah, Lord, yeah, yeah, yep, same one yesterday, yeah, uh huh, yeah, same one this morning, okay? Got tired of it. And I ran across this verse Submit to God. I surrender to the one who died for me. Beloved, the, the equation for salvation is very simple. Accept the fact that Jesus paid your sin debt in full on Calvary plus nothing equals salvation. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it is by grace you are saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is a gift from God, not by works, lest anyone should boast. We're not going to be in heaven. Well, I've got my ingathering goal every year when I was on earth. Really? Okay. Five billion years into eternity, who cares? No. We have an intercessor, Hebrews 7, 25, whoever lives to make intercession for us, and the only way for me to lose out on the road is for him to fail as an intercessor. But Barry, you've got to confess every, every known sin, yeah, probably every, you know, Jesus prayed for the unconfessed sins of those who crucified him. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You sin every day through omission, and you don't even know it. Hence, James, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, then doeth it not. So there are sins of omission that our magnificent intercessor, who retains his human form, Acts 1.11, this same Jesus, hallelujah, retains his human form. He's coming back again and he's pleading for me. My blood, my blood. And when I accept what he, he's done, he says in John 10, no one will be able to snatch you out of my hands. In, in conclusion, I remember reading through the Bible, some of you know my mother gave us a monetary incentive, five cents for each Bible verse. We memorize, I know all of the short verses in the entire Bible, all of the short verses. <laughs> any verse, any, I wish they had a Jeopardy program that says Bible verses, five words or less. I, duh, 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 it was just, yeah, it was, you know, I know. John eleven thirty five, 35, Jesus wept. Luke 17, 32, remember Lot's wife. First Thessalonians 5, a treasure trip. Rejoice evermore, praise the Lord. You know, you know. Pray without ceasing, praise the Lord, you know. Despise not prophesied, praise the Lord, you know. And, and so, he, 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 but beloved, we've got to realize that if we're going to let this magnificent Savior use us, his word in us, he sets us free. And I was reading and I came across Samson and I said, oh my goodness, he committed suicide. He's gone. I'm reading through the whole Bible trying to pick up verses. 
And you can imagine my astonishment, Lewis, when I got to Hebrews 11. This man, let me die with my enemy. Boom, boom, boom. I said, well, he's a goner. And I, I can hear folk at the funeral, you know, particularly if they're Sabbath keepers. Isn't it a shame how he went out? Lord Jesus, I, I feel so sorry for the family. Oh, my God. Pray for the family. You know, he was a whoremonger. You know, that's what they say. You know, you know how we sanctified gossip. The Bible says, and what more can I tell you? Let me tell you about Samson. Somebody interceding for us. Somebody saving us in spite of ourselves. Somebody will empower us to turn the tables on evil. So I fight now. The devil knows he's going to get a fight with me. I used to come out with my hands up. I don't want any trouble, devil. Just leave me. I don't want any trouble. And to my astonishment, I discovered that minimal resistance. And he goes running. Like, oh, you got, I like to scare him just by saying Jesus. <laughs> he trembles at that. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, how sweet the name. Jesus. Every day the same. Jesus. Let all flesh proclaim his worthy name forever. And all that I am and all that I hope to be, I owe to him. Praise God. I want you to bow your heads. And I want you to make a commitment. As I resist temptation, by the grace of God, as I, as I encounter temptation, by the grace of God, I will not give in without a fight. My days of just Surrendering without any effort, those days are over. Devil, you're going to have to fight me for this one. And you're going to have to fight me not because I'm afraid of hell, but you're going to have to fight me because Jesus, my Savior, paid much too high a price for me, for me to surrender to evil without a fight. Hebrews 12, 4, oh God, reminds us we have not yet resisted unto blood in our battle against sin. No nail prints in our hands, no thorn-crowned brow. Help us this day to make the commitment by God's grace. I don't go down anymore without a fight. And I'm going to ask you to do something that you may not be accustomed to doing, but I want to, I want I want you to make the devil tremble by publicly letting him know he's in for a fight. I want him to be on notice that he is in for a fight. So if you're making that commitment with me, would you stand as I pray for us? I am not going down again, praise God, without a fight. Heavenly Father, what a beautiful sight this is. How awesome is your word that in this day when we wrestle against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world, oh God, we have a Savior who can save from the guttermost to the uttermost all those who come to him by faith. We stand because we love him. We stand because he deserves our best effort. We put the devil and his demonic entourage on notice that by the grace of God, we will do spiritual warfare. We will use the armor in Ephesians 6. And we declare by faith that we are already, through Jesus Christ, more than conquerors. The battle is already won. The enemy is already defeated. It is finished and heaven is already ours. In that name that is above every name, the precious name 
of Jesus Christ, my Savior and friend. Amen and amen. God love you.